I'm Thorsten Haas. I'm a leading consultant at the Department of Pediatric Anesthesia at the University Children's Hospital here in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm head of a patient blood management program and my research focus is on perioperative bleeding management. Patient blood management is an interdisciplinary approach which tries to optimize patients' care in terms of blood transfusion. So our, our basic goal is to reduce the amount of transfused blood products by lowering the intraoperative blood loss. So what we do to reach that is, first of all, we have a strict viscoelastic testing guided bleeding management program. We are trying to find the best and optimal time point for each and every surgery. We're trying to lower minimizing blood withdrawals. And as part of the basic PBM program, we are also managing preoperative anemia, like uh, iron deficiency. Transfusion of allergenic blood products can be life-saving in massively bleeding patients. But what we know is that transfusion may be linked to an increased risk in side effects, just like trolley or taco. And maybe it's the immunomodulating effects, which is actually the worst. What we have learned is that unnecessary transfusion, in fact, can increase morbidity or mortality in our patients. So in addition, um, our global population is getting older and we will face more high-risk procedures with an even higher blood utilization. So every attempt to reduce unnecessary transfusions is of great importance for all of us. It can lower the length of stay at the ICU and at the hospital, and it can lower transfusion-related costs. So the implementation of a patient blood management program is actually recommended by all major societies. The primary steps may be to implement a transfusion committee, if not already in place, to define a hospital-wide transfusion protocol and guidelines, and to analyze transfusion data of your hospital, and to, of course, to train and motivate all your healthcare professions at your hospital. Viscoelastic testing is actually the preferred uh, option to detect and guide your bleeding management. So you can describe classical bleeding management by actually treating your patients in a ratio-driven transfusion approach, such as giving platelets or plasma and red cells in a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one approach. So the advantage of this approach is an easy-to-remember intervention that is usually part of a massive transfusion protocol. The downside is that in many patients, the transfusion of all three blood products is actually not really needed. And if the NTP is terminated, this results in a waste of prepared but not transfused blood products. So if you're using a targeted point of care guided bleeding management, you will be able to supplement the factors which are actually needed. Transfusion of allergenic blood products can be actually decreased just by administering coagulation factor concentrates. So just as an example, in the perioperative setting, you frequently have an impairment of standard coagulation tests, and then people start to give plasma. However, if you have the opportunity just to run a viscoelastic test, just like uh, the thromboelastography, in many cases you can identify that, for example, acquired fibrinogen deficiency is the main and only underlying reason. So in those cases, uh, the administration of fibrinogen concentrate is the preferred therapy and transfusion of plasma can be avoided. Fibrinogen concentrate is actually very easy to reconstitute. So we have it timely available. It has an excellent safety profile and therefore it's our first choice to treat those patients suffering from low fibrinogen levels and massive bleeding. We do have a lot of cardiac cases here in our hospital, but we also have a very busy orthopedic and major craniofacial surgery program. And especially the major craniofacial surgeries, they're kind of a perfect model to show that even during a, a massive bleeding scenario, during a massive bleeding situation, fibrinogen is the usual and first factor that is really a problem to those patients. So what we have learned over time is just by substituting fibrinogen based on what we've seen on the thromboelastography values, this is actually all those patients needed to be treated. This new approach has helped us tremendously to lower the amount of, of transfused allergenic blood products. For example, we do no longer need any drop of, of plasma or platelets in this situation. And all of this has actually helped to treat our patients really sufficiently, effectively. And just by doing so, we also have lowered costs, which is, I think, a great outcome. Although it's still a long way to go, what we have learned over time is really to stay in contact and to collaborate with people from all over the world to learn from each other. 
And having said that, we have just finished uh, the preparation of a seminar where we want to invite key opinion leaders to share our knowledge, our expertise, and to discuss it with them. So our major focus is really on improving patient safety of our patients. And patient blood management may be one of the best tools actually to reach that.